This is Dave VE3OI and I put this video together to describe how I'm decoding RIDI and PSK using an Arduino. I've posted uh, several other videos showing my Arduino RIDI PSK transceiver prototype. Uh, first a warning, I'm, I'm no way an expert in digital signal processing and this video should not be viewed as being authoritative. It's based on my limited uh, knowledge on the subject. What I'm hoping is others are going to take this work, build upon it, and possibly create other web pages, videos, white papers that's going to help novices such as myself better understand digital signal processing. RIDI is based on frequency shift keying where a carrier shifted to indicate a mark or a space. A mark is a binary 1 and a space is a binary 0. PSK reception is based on frequency shift keying where the carrier's phase is shifted 180 degrees to the node of binary 0 or it's not shifted to the node of binary 1. Both PSK and RIDI have a built-in mechanism to synchronize the transmitter and receiver. My plan is to create another video that's going to describe the synchronization and the character framing process. I've listed several mechanisms I've played around with to detect frequencies and phase shifts. Two common ways is to use a Fourier transform. There's a discrete fast Fourier transform as well as a narrowband Fourier transform. There are also many clever filters that, that can be used. Some are rather complex and needs quite a bit of processing power. I've found that correlation requires the smallest sample size as well as relatively low processing cycles and it seemed to be best suited for the Arduino. Here are some considerations I used when I decided on the mechanism to decode uh, RIDI and PSK. First off, the Arduino is a relatively small microcontroller with limited processing capabilities. It doesn't have the horsepower to do much digital signal processing. Second, the time to detect a bit is another important consideration. I call this the bit duty cycle. For RIDI, the time between bits is 22 milliseconds. That is, the mark or space frequency is on for 22 milliseconds and must be detected and processed within this time. For PSK, the bit time is 32 milliseconds. This means that the phase of the carrier is shifted or not shifted every 32 milliseconds. You know, at first you may think that uh, there's an enormous amount of time to detect and process a bit, but it's not. I found that sampling, performing math calculations, and framing characters sometimes takes over half of the bit duty time. Typical programs such as FL Digi run in a PC, which uses DSP techniques to address low signal to noise. The Arduino can't do much digital signal processing and therefore the signal to noise ratio for RIDI and PSK needs to be much higher. However, it's important for the mechanism I use to address relatively small errors. For example, there could be errors from a noise spike which is small compared to the bit duty cycle. I address these types of errors by taking signal samples and processing it several times within the bit du duty cycle. <clears throat> this way I have a better chance of detecting a frequency or phase shift. Ideally, <clears throat> I'd like to sample and process in real time, but uh, the Arduino just doesn't have the horsepower to do this. For example, if a relatively fast noise spike wipe, wipes out a portion of the RIDI signal by sampling multiple times, I can get around this type of error. However, if the same noise spike was to wipe out the phase transition, the correlation technique I'm using may not be able to detect a phase change. Currently right now I'm getting about 10 to 20 percent of PSK characters being dropped and I'm still experimenting with ways how to improve this. Ideally, I'd like to capture a sample and process it, you know, three to four times within the bit duty cycle. For example, all sampling and processing should be completed within at least seven milliseconds for RIDI and within about 10 milliseconds for PSK. This gives me a more reliability when operations can be repeated and compared. So correlation is a mechanism used to identify how similar two signals are. If the signals are very similar, then the correlation result is positive and large. If there is no correlation, the result is zero. If the signal moves opposite to each other, then the correlation is negative and large. I use cross-correlation where two signals are multiplied point by point and summed. The, the signals are shifted and the process repeated. 
The sums versus the delay or shift is used to identify the frequency in the phase shift. To detect frequencies, I specifically use autocorrelation, which is where a signal is correlated with itself. I found that I only need 32 samples, which is about three wavelengths at one kilohertz, to detect the frequency, and about 26 samples, which is about two wavelengths at one kilohertz, to identify phase shift. The Arduino's ADC is sampling at 9615 hertz. Here's how correlation works to detect a frequency. This shows two 830 hertz signals that are being correlated, or it's showing the autocorrelation of a single 830 hertz signal. First, you do a point by point multiplication of each point in the waveform and then sum all the multiplications. Then you shift or delay the signal and repeat the process. As you shift the one signal, you would shift in zeros or drop the signal that's being shifted out. You repeat this process until the shifted signal is completely shifted out and only zeros remain. Here's an important observation about correlation. When the two signals are in phase, you get a large positive sum. In the table, you'll see a shift of zero has a value of over 367,000. The signals are in phase again at around delay 12, which has another large sum of over 224,000, which is over 60% of the initial value at delay zero. The delay at which the signals are back in phase is a measure of the frequency of the signal. So in this case, a delay of 12 represents 830 hertz. Here's another important observation. In the previous slide, you saw that when the signals are in phase, you get a large positive number. That's at delay 0 and delay 12. However, when the signals are 180 degrees out of phase, you get the opposite you get a large negative number. In this case, the signals are out of phase at delay 6. So when the signals are in phase, there's a large positive sum. And when 180 degrees out of phase, there's a large negative sum. So here's a plot of sum versus delay. You can see the first maximum at delay 0 and a second maximum between delays 11 and 12. The other important observation is that the height of the second maximum relative to the first maximum, that height could be used as a threshold at which you could identify whether the signal is truly a periodic signal and it's within the passpan. What I'm basically describing here is what's called autocorrelation. It's where you take a signal and you correlate it with itself. That is, I sample the signal and then I correlate the signal with a copy of itself. There are a lot of sources on the internet detailing how to use autocorrelation to detect uh, frequencies. What I'm showing here is a result for autocorrelation of an 830 hertz signal and a 1000 hertz signal. And you can see that the delay for the maximum shifts depending on the frequency. For RIDI 45, I'm using 170 Hz separation between mark and space frequencies, hence the 830 and 1000 Hz uh, frequencies. I chose these frequencies because I have an analog front end before the Arduino's ADC that implements an active low pass filter with a cutoff frequency around 900 Hz. That defines my pass band. So with the Arduino receiver, I need to tune the RIDI signal into the passband for processing. Then I will do a peak detect to identify the delay and hence if a mark or space frequency was present. Then I frame the received bits into a character. I'm going to post a separate video describing how to frame PSK and RIDI characters. To further illustrate my point about how autocorrelation could be used to detect frequencies, Here's an autocorrelation showing a 1500 Hz and a 2000 Hz signal. And you can see the maximum for the 1500 Hz signal is around 6, and the maximum for the 2000 Hz signal is around 5. To decode PSK, you would need to recover the carrier from the signal and use it to figure out if a phase shift has occurred. 
There are a couple ways I could do this on an Arduino. First, I could have generated a clean carrier sample as a reference signal and correlate the incoming signal against a reference to detect phase shifts. The trick here would be to lock the reference signal's phase to the non-phase shifted PSK carrier. Alternatively, I could have captured a portion of the non-phase shifted PSK carrier and used that as a reference. I could also capture two consecutive segments of the incoming signal then cross correlate them. If the phase shift occurred somewhere between the two consecutive segments I could detect the phase shift. So I thought this approach would be easier to implement and, I, and currently that's what I'm using. As I said before I'm getting about 10 to 20 percent PSK packet loss and I think this is because occasionally I'm missing the phase shift or maybe because noise uh, wipes out the actual phase shift. I'm still experimenting with other ways that I can improve upon this. The strategy I use is to take 26 samples and then split that into halves. That is split into two 13 point samples then correlate the first 13 point sample against the second 13 point sample. In theory if a phase shift occurred within the original 26 point sample I would get a negative correlation at delay zero. So here's actually what's happening. You can see right at the top, you can see a 26 point uh, sample that is split into two 13 point samples. The top chart shows the autocorrelation of these two 13 point samples. The bottom chart shows the correlation of another separate 26 point sample. The source data for this correlation is not shown. The top chart shows that the 13 point samples are almost 180 degrees out of phase and the bottom chart shows that the signals are almost in phase. The charts on the right show the corresponding autocorrelation plot of sum versus delay. Notice the initial correlation value at delay zero and the location of, of the maximum. Also note the maximum of one plot and the minima of the second plot lines up. Bottom line here is that you could use the value of the correlation sum at delay zero to identify a phase shift. The dramatic shift in location of the maximum is, is another, another indicator of a phase shift, but this is primarily the result of where the actual phase shift occurs in a 26 point sample. Does it occur at the start, the middle, or the end? You can also use the height of the maximum or the minimum to determine if a periodic signal is present, that is, if there's a carrier. In summary, here's how I decode PSK. First of all, I choose a PSK carrier of 1000 Hz, which is the same as a ready marked frequency. It keeps things simpler. The Arduino receiver would need to tune the PSK carrier into the passband. I would then do an autocorrelation of the first two halves of the signal uh, sample buffer. I would monitor the value delay zero as well as the location of the maximum to identify 180 degree phase shift. Every 32 milliseconds I would check for a one or zero and then frame the received PSK character. In a subsequent video I will show how to actually frame PSK and ready characters. So this concludes this video and I hope this was helpful. Uh, as I said at the start of this video, I'm hoping that others will take this work, build upon it, maybe develop websites, develop videos, or white papers that help novices such as myself better understand how to use digital signal processing techniques, especially on microcontrollers.